What's up, Andy? And road dogs and highway hounds, what's going on? Okay, I'm uh, really tired, so. Andy was asking me if uh, if I was buying Bitcoin right now. And uh, I'm not buying any. I don't think I'm going to buy any because I think we could have a really good sale in it with all this drama that's going on. And I think I think a lot of it's blown out of proportion. I just have that feeling. Um, but whatever. It is what it is. But this is the reason why Litecoin was created. And this is why I like Litecoin so much. Is because when the when the system when the Bitcoin and this is why it was designed too, if you listen to some of Charlie Lee's earlier videos, it's lighter, you know, it's easier to use. You know, so it was created to complement Bitcoin like this. It's silver to Bitcoin's gold. <clears throat> but everybody jumps into Bitcoin and they want they want everybody after them to jump into Bitcoin too because that makes their Bitcoin more valuable. And I don't really care about making them rich, you know. I just care about a good ethical money, monetary system. So I just like Litecoin for that reason gold and silver ratio because you know listen roger ver bought a bunch of bitcoin and i heard tone vase saying that uh um he bought his bitcoin two years later but it, with that amount of time you know it was it's just huge because the people who were in first bought them all up as much as they could and then everybody else goes in and tries to buy them all up. And then they tell everybody after them, hey, you need to buy up all the Bitcoin. And I'm sitting here saying, well, no, that's gold. And Litecoin is silver. So, and there, it's a one in four ratio. And it's trading at like one and 250 now. I think I'm going to be buying the Litecoin. You guys go ahead and buy the Bitcoin. And so that's, that's my... That's my thinking. That's why I like Litecoin, because it gives me a frame of reference. I can look at it, look at the prices, and I can say, Litecoin's a better deal. I'm buying Litecoin. And because of the history of money, so I buy Litecoin. But right now, I guess now, if you buy money, buy uh, Bitcoin on uh, Coinbase, you have to pay a fee to put transfer it to uh, a uh, paper wallet. So... Probably, I, you know, I'm not doing that. They'll figure this stuff out. It's going to scale in time, but it may take. Somebody loves me. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm trying to sleep and I'm getting all these messages. But, uh, anyway, so am I buying Bitcoin right now? No, I did last week but this week they come out and said that you're gonna to have to start paying the fees for the clogged network on the bitcoin thing because of the scaling debate and i'm not too keen on paying those fees so what i will do is i will uh probably give ethereum a pump i will buy ethereum transfer transfer my ethereum to an exchange and buy litecoin so ethereum's going to get a little traction from me which is fine with me. It can go up to a thousand dollars, and I ain't gonna get excited because it's a corrupt. Whatever you guys know how I feel about Ethereum. Go watch some of my other videos. Type in Ethereum and RSK Labs in YouTube, and look for this shirt because I just made a video before this one. Um. But uh, so that's that's what I'm doing. Um, Bitcoin could go down big time here. It could go up big time. I don't know what the heck it's going to do, and I don't worry about it. I dollar cost average. I put in X amount of dollars every week into Bitcoin and Litecoin. Most, mostly Litecoin. Um, but, you know, it's totally a, uh, a concept of, you know, people have to rationally think about the gold and silver concept. And I don't necessarily know uh, 
how many people are doing that. You guys need to share these videos. You know, people tell me sometimes, uh, uh, you should post your videos here, you know, and, and stuff like that. Feel free to post my videos wherever, wherever you want. I ain't, you know, they, somebody emailed me a while back um, asking me, you know, to sign a disclaimer or something. You know, wanting to use one of my videos and their stuff. Use it for whatever, you know, just don't be a jerk, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, if you, but post it, man, and spread the word. I want you guys to spread the word about this channel. I'm not good with computers, right? I, I just had my first uh, Twitter conversation today, and I didn't think I knew how to do it, but it's pretty, it's like texting, really. So, um, so anyway, that's what I'm doing now. How should you prepare for the, uh, the fork, the forking situation? So I've been through a fork before. Um, I was went through the Ethereum forking situation, and I bought I have some Ethereum still today on a paper wallet, okay. And it's pre fork Ethereum, so I can actually, if Ethereum hard fork fails and Ethereum Classic succeeds, at a you know in five in five ten years, which I don't think is going to happen, but in theory i could just transfer my uh, ethereum to ethereum classic or i could transfer it to ethereum hard fork and i don't know all the technical things about the fork and when you when you spend it but I was listening to Andreas Antonopoulos after when the whole forking thing was going on, when they were talking about it, and he said something, you know, because it was never, it had never been done before, or whatever, but, I mean, I'm sure it's ha happened, but how did the network react when you spent a light coal, or a ether on one chain compared to the other chain and he said i think he said that there was like a mirror transaction so you were actually you actually moved it to another chain chain but i don't know how all that stuff works but uh yeah I'm, but here's the thing i've got mine on a paper wallet okay so in 10 15 years this is kind of this is where you got to be thinking do you want to move your Bitcoin now before the hard fork? Um, you you might want to move them if you've got them on an app. If you got it on Jax or one of these, anything on your phone, you want to get it on something before the fork that you have access to the hard key or the uh, private keys, full access to. Um, because... this this fork being not backwards compatible you can really jack up your money because if whatever wallet you're using doesn't update to one or the other or something like that and you go to spend it you may never get it on the chain that you want want it from don't ask me i don't know but <laughs> I'm a buy and hold guy. I buy it, I hold it, I forget about it. That's just what I do. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll wait. You know, to me, it's it's. I'm building a business, so when the time comes to where I'm going to start implementing cryptocurrency in my business, I'm gonna have somebody who knows what the heck they're doing messing with it. You know. And I'll be telling them stories. Yeah, I started buying Litecoin when it was... I remember when Litecoin was a dollar. And it'd be like, are you kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Or what was it? I think the cheapest I ever bought it was like a buck eighty-five, But uh, something like that. Anyway. So, uh, yeah. So preparing for the hard fork 
I would uh, I'd get get your Bitcoin on a paper wallet. You know, I think uh, I don't think it's going to happen too soon, but it could happen quicker than you think. So I would get my stuff off of whatever. I suppose a Trezor would be good or something like that or a Nano, but I don't I don't know how to work those things. So I just and I and I'm not trying to sell anything. So I just put it on a paper wallet and forget it. I've got my private keys. I can look at them. I can say there's my private key. I can show you my private key. I can type it into a computer, my private key, and then I can do whatever I want with them. And I ain't moving my Bitcoin because I'll have a bunch of pre-fork Bitcoin. <laughs> Which, to me, that pre-fork Ethereum is going to be more valuable than... Uh, than uh, than uh, any Ethereum that you buy now. You know what I'm saying? So, why wouldn't, man, why wouldn't you want your, uh, your Bitcoin on a paper wallet? You've got, that, to me, that makes it more precious and more rare. I've got pre-fork Ethereum. Do you? You don't. I don't know what I can do with it. But someday, I might, you know, have somebody working with me that's real good at this stuff. And I say, yeah, I got some uh, pre-fork Ethereum. And you're like, what? How did you get that? It's like, well, I bought it before the fork. <laughs> you know? But I don't know if that'll be beneficial at all or whatever, but I'm not moving it. You know? I'm not moving it. So, uh, I mean, this could be something. To me, it's more rare. It's pre-fork. What you got on a, on a paper wallet right now, what you have right now is pre-fork Bitcoin. That's pretty cool. I don't know why, but it might be pretty cool. <laughs> just it's just common sense, you know. That's all I'm doing. It's deflationary currency, Bitcoin, Litecoin, released fairly, and uh, I just get it on a paper wallet. I would, you know, I don't know. I mean, do you buy Bitcoin or Litecoin at this point? I mean, that's kind of up to you. Do you buy into the gold and silver aspect of, of it all? Um, I got a freaking hair. <clears throat> like, sitting there, like, doing this. <sighs> but, uh, so, yeah, that's that's kind of my thoughts on the whole thing. I'm not too scared about this uh, hard fork because... This hard fork compared to the Ethereum hard fork is totally different. The Ethereum hard fork was screwed up because Joe Lubin was trying to save his buddy's money because he committed a bunch of, you know, his buddy's money, you know, his, you know, who knows who it was. It could be Goldman Sachs big shots or whatever, you know. And he could have just uh, raised money for them, and then the, you'll be in charge because we'll make it a whatever. So they hard forked Ethereum, and the whole idea of Ethereum at that time was the code is the law. You know, the hardcore libertarians were like, "Screw the government! They're never gonna," you know, they were, well, were totally revolutionary. And then they went and they forked it. It was like what? When that happened, it was like, are you kidding me? To save the investors their money? This is not decentralized. This is highly managed. This is not what Ethereum was supposed to be. So, uh, yeah, so this hard fork is just people stomping around wanting to get their way. And... I don't necessarily know what the right way is. Um, but I'm going to have pre-fork Bitcoin. So I'm just going to... I'm not in a hurry. You know? Uh, I'm not in a hurry to figure out which side to be on. Because I don't really care. I mean, I do care. And I'm freaking... Last, last two days, all I've been doing is listening to this stuff on Mad Bitcoin. So I guess I care a whole hell of a lot. But... But yeah, so I'm trying to figure it out. 
Um, but I don't know. But I think people are getting a little too excited about this whole thing. So it's not like the Ethereum hard fork. A hard fork is just... And it really is just an update, but you really want everybody to be on board with it, and and it's contentious right now, and you're 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 we're feeling the uh, struggle, but the struggle has been going on for years, and it's coming to a head now, and it's now it's getting heating up and it's getting visible. You know, it's like a big red zit that's about ready to pop. You know what I mean? It's like oh my gosh, you know, you know last it was still growing there three days ago, but. Uh, you know, you didn't know it because it wasn't, didn't, you know, wasn't painful. Now it's getting painful and everybody's watching the drama and freaking out and stuff. And don't freak out. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, so, uh, that's really all I got to say. Just make sure you're not on a, uh, hot wallet. Uh, cold storage for me. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so I don't know if that, you know, if you're more technical than I am, which most of you probably are. Um, do what you want, but it's not, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm no, I know just enough to screw this whole thing up and lose all my money. So only invest what you can afford to lose. All right, adios, muchachos.